will not bear false witness. If you love, you'll care about your parents. If you love, you'll honor God. If you love, you will not harm others. So it becomes easier for one to keep the commandment if the driving force is love. And that's why the Bible says, love your God as yourself. And the Bible says, this is the basis. The Israelites developed this into a great theme which became their rallying call and their call to worship, and they called it Shema. Shema in Hebrew is those words you announce so that people know who you are worshiping, like the way the Muslim uh, say aloud, Allahu Akbar. So the, the Jews used to cry aloud in their language and say, the Lord our God is one. I shall love my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my might, and I will also love my neighbors. So they were reminded as you get into the promised land, the way to go is the way of love. The way to thrive is through love, where you can all care for one another. For love is not the word that we say, it is the action that accompany, the care giving, the protection, the you know, uh, caring about today and tomorrow, how we bring up our children. And the Bible says, when you have cared enough, then these words must be taught to generations to come. Your children, put them on the, uh, on the wrist of their hands, put in their foreheads, talk to them when they go out, even when you are far away, talk about it. When you come in, when you lie uh, uh, down, when you rise up, fix on their doorsteps and uh, put it in your gate so that people will know what God's teaching are all about. Chapter 8 of Deuteronomy, from verse 11. Now, he began to prepare a nation that was coming out of slavery. A nation that has never owned property. A nation that has never known freedom. A nation that has never known to manage their own public affairs. And he is now warning them that when you go to that land, be careful not to forget your God. And that because you know, Your Excellency, we have finished the first part of our service, including this reading, what has been read to people, but let me read now that you're here, so that we hear what the Bible is telling us. Verse 11. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes. When I am commanding you today, which I am commanding you today, when you have eaten, you have, you have filled, and have built fine houses and lived in them. And when your herds and your flock have multiplied, and your silver and your gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, and aided you through the arid wastelands with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water for, for you from a flint rock and fed you with manna in the wilderness and your ancestors. Humble yourself so that you do not exalt yourself and say, my power and my might or my own hands have gotten me this wealth. And where I am. But remember the Lord your God. It is He who gives you power to get wealth, and he, he, it is He who enables you to confirm His covenant with you. What the Word is asking us today is in the moment we have, because we are all passing by, let us follow His commandments. Let us work hard knowing it is the Lord who has given us what we have. It is the Lord who has walked the diocese of uh, Eldoret these 40 years. Whatever bishop you have, whatever has been created, whatever imagination has been, let our hearts never rise and think it is us who made it. If we send our minds back to the very beginnings of this diocese, 
when Bishop Alexander Kipsang Muge, the Lord rest his soul, began it. It covered the whole area up to Lodwa and Lokichogyo, all the way uh, to <coughs> West Pokot, uh, what is now in now, Kitale, and uh, Wasingishu and Nandi. The diocese did not have resources, but he had a great vision and great imagination. When we read his history, he laid the first foundations of establishing churches, but also creating space for the church to thrive and grow. He bought a piece of land, which now uh, the Diocese of Kitali has, Bishop Muge. He was given the area now where we were in Kimalel, Pioneer, and he had imagination to grow a diocese with resources and where churches can thrive and grow. He did not live to accomplish, but he planted the seeds. Where Bishop Kawasis, when he came for 17 years, he built on the foundations laid by the late Bishop Moge. Those foundations became stronger, and when Bishop Kogo came, he established on them. And now, Bishop Ruto, you are carrying on. <clears throat> Through that history, what we have seen is a diocese that has grown from one stride to another. You gave birth first to Kitale. Kitale gave birth to Kapenguria Diocese. And now Lodwa has also been set aside to become a diocese. And recently, uh, Kapsabet also became a diocese. If we put together, if we put together, all that development of churches and the number of Christians and the multiplication that has happened, we can only say it is the Lord who has done it. The imagination of Bishop Alexander was not only in evangelism and creating churches. He also came with a robust social development program called CCS, Christian Community Services. Together with the late uh, Archbishop Gitari and the late Bishop Okulu, they attended that Delta course in South Africa. And they came and merged theology and development to be part of the mission agenda of the church. And through the Anglican Development Services, where we now, we now have ADS Northrift, we are able to respond to food security challenges, we are able to respond to health issues, we are able to respond to education issues and other issues affecting humanity, including um, socioeconomic empowerment through the five talent programs that we run as a church. Therefore, the imagination of a church that responds to social, economic, and spiritual needs of the society was imagined then by the founders of this diocese. So what are we celebrating these 40 years? We are celebrating a diocese that are, is actively present in all those aspects, in environment protection, in uh, food security, in healthcare, in education, but in the spiritual formation of the community, uh, alongside also socioeconomic empowerment. We are celebrating a diocese that is also moving to develop <laughs> self-sustainability programs. Your Excellency, one of the projects we were praying for is a, a NACK plaza owned by Eldoret Diocese and Capsabet in the middle of Eldoret Town, a building that is come, coming up on a whole acre of land. It is now five stories building tall. The ground floor and the underground and the car parking uh, is, is complete. We commission that complete spaces. We also are able to bless uh, Bishop Mig uh, Pioneer Estate uh, in Kimalel and other churches that we opened afresh. This is to propel the church to be self-sustaining in mission, but we are also imagining, and this is our great imagination, that the church in the West is diminishing. And soon, the West will need missionaries from Africa. 
and we are preparing ourselves to be the next missionary sending continent with our own resources grown locally so that we are able to do that. And your excellence is not a joke. We have now two missionaries in uh, Madagascar from Kenya. We have sent some by the Diocese of Mount Kenya South uh, in, in, in DRC. And uh, we have our first bishop in New Zealand, Bishop Maina, who is our missionary uh, and now our bishop in New Zealand. So it's not a joke. It is a, <laughs> it's, it's becoming a reality. So we are celebrating milestones of the Diocese of uh, Eldoret. Bishop uh, Christopher, you are now steering the Great Development Agenda. And when I worked with you these uh, few days, I said the diocese is now ready for an explosion. Because I can see it from how parishes are organized. I was in Cab Sabet last month for five days. And I was also seeing an explosion in Kapsabet. We opened eight new churches, big ones, in the rural communities. There was a, a moment when I was welcomed by uh, 862 lay readers, all robbed in Kapsabet. I did not imagine that is the number the church has, has mobilized. When I was in Bere, I commissioned 1,672 uh, children brigade and uh, uh, girls and Boys Brigade. It is, it is imaginable to see those big crowds that the church is able to nurture with these very words of the Shema. The Lord our God is one. Love your God with all your soul, with all your might, with all your capacity. Today as we stand on the threshold of celebrating 40 years of the Diocese of Eldoret existence, we find ourselves in a field of faith cultivating the seeds of God's word, our journey is akin to that of a farmer. And I know this is a farming community. Sowing the seeds of the Shema, love your God with all your soul, all your might, all, your, all what you want. Tilling the soil of our hearts and nurturing the growth of our spirituality. Just as a farmer carefully selects the best seeds for a bountiful harvest, we have chosen the Shema as a foundation of our faith, for it is the purest and most fruitful seed. If we sow this seed and we all love one another, then we shall have a loving community, a loving nation, a nation that will stand on the threshold of brotherhood and not divisions. In the words of Henry David Theriot, he said this, though I do not believe that a plant will spring up where no seed has been, I have great faith in a seed. Convince me that you have a seed there, and I am prepared to expect wonders. Your Excellency, we want to plant that seed in this nation, the seed of love, 